pretty bad storms last night. Yeah, but it sure was. Lightning. Gale force winds. Yeah, I mean we fared pretty well. I didn't. It wasn't. Wasn't a big deal. I sure am glad I'm not setting up. You know, breaking down a, a wet tent and cooking out in the rain and oh, all that. That would have been rough. Pretty awesome. Yeah, it is. That uh, that building there is impressive. The Hoist House, eighteen eighty two. That's awesome. Look at all these parts. Yeah. Very cool. Like people working there. This is where the mine, uh, the tour starts. Remember the name of this mine? What is it? Quincy. Quincy? That's right. Quincy Mine. Stamp mill. Now this thing. At the mill, steam stamps freed the copper from the surrounding balsa balsa rock the waste or stamp sand was deposited into torch lake copper concentrate would then be transported to the Quincy smelter for final purification casting and eventual shipment via the portage waterway Is that a wheel? Oh yeah, I don't look know at that what thing. that is, yeah. So you know like the um, blacksmith would have used something like that, you know, that's like a puffer for the fire. Yeah. You see? Yeah, I see it. Pretty neat. Look at this look at this scale. Oh boy. Look at that thing. Mm-hmm. Hmm. That's so you can weigh out your stuff. Steam drill. Don't spit on me. Okay. <laughs> and Torch Lake Railroad. Get all the miners. Hey, look at this. Uh, Renee, we, we caught fish right here. The dredge. That dredge is on Torch Lake. Yeah. What a hard life. 
Man, no kidding, look at all these folks. All here is on vacation. Raise your hand. Almost everyone, huh? 90% of everyone. All right, well, thank you all for stopping by and making us a part of your trip. As well, who all here is a native Michigander? Awesome. 80%. Okay, so welcome everyone to the Upper Peninsula of Michigan here. Some of you who have not been up here before may have been hearing a new word as you make your travels through here. It's a nickname for locals who are native to the Upper Peninsula. Dating back to 1975, anyone who is born and raised in the Upper Peninsula is known as a Uper. Mm. And don't worry, all of us, all of us who are from the Lower Peninsula here also have a nickname. Those who live under the bridge, trolls. <laughs> don't worry, it's an endearing nickname, I assure you. Grass a corn from the small parts of the well, those are going to come through, fill all of these up with oil, set the drip rate, allowing them to slowly drip that oil on the moving part of these machines, giving them the nickname drippers. This is before we had our standard day ball bearings from where we first drip them from wearing down, so we need to put oil in all the moving parts to prevent it from wearing down. This is Quincy's flagship building. It can't go down. As well, when they're done filling all these up with oil, their second job, Clean that oil right back up. The moving parts of these machines are just going to leak oil out in the surrounding area, and if they spill any oil, they've got to clean it up. Reason being, what happens if a surprise investor comes through wanting to tour the world's largest steam hoist, see what he is putting his money into? I don't think any nice, rich, sophisticated man in a suit is going to want to see oil. You want to ring that bell? Yeah, where is it? We might have to stand up. Can you reach it? <laughs> nice job. There we go. Okay, so they got a whole bunch of signals there, kind of like Morse code in case somebody gets hurt down in the mine, and that's how you, that's how you uh, do it. I think they said, you, uh, yeah, I think they said nine. Yeah, I think they said nine was an emergency. Nine? Nine, yep. Pretty sure. This is crazy. Unfortunately, this place closed down because um, the cost of copper was just, they, they weren't making any money. And it closed down for six years and then it reopened. Um, when they reopened this, they tried to reopen. When they tried to reopen, they found that 40 through 90 uh, stories, 40 through 90, had collapsed. Huh. So, yeah. Pretty crazy. Watch your cane there.
Washington. They started using this mine as a laboratory for building and blowing out the classes. Wow. Back in the 1970s. They don't do those classes in here anymore, though. They started using this as a drilling and blasting for classes. Michigan Tech. Ton bucket back there, that's what they used to scoop up rock and haul it out. But this was just used by the Michigan Tech students. Huh. The Quincy mine shut down in 1945. This would have been used starting in the, about the 1950s. Do you hear him? I heard him. Good, good. So Michigan Tech students built this so that they could have a convenient place to take a lecture. It hasn't been used in about 25 years, though. They stopped running classes in here a while ago. How in the 1990s. Man. We just saw. Right here, we have, what, uh, we have a winch system, and this is a big, big giant steel hook. It's called the Stoke Scraper. Hmm. They use this to scrape a soap, and you're going to see a soap in a little while, so it'll, it'll make a little bit more sense. But basically, you have the giant steel hook scraping on a rock wall, bringing rock from up above down into these chutes, so you can load those tram cars easily. Just pass that tram hmm. car underneath the chute, open it up, rock falls in. One of the things I like to point out here is the noise that would be produced by yeah. these. Oh my god. So imagine a giant steel hook Just on a rock wall. scraping down a rock wall. It's gonna be real loud, and there was no hearing protection used in this mine ever, because that sort of thing wasn't available into the 1950s. I can't imagine what that machine sounded like running up there. That machine. Uh, so apparently, that hoist engine was pretty quiet. Really? Yeah, you'd have been able to hear the tour while it was going on. Oh wow! Uh, steam I guess engines that's... are pretty quiet. Yeah. Typically. Uh, normally when you think steam engine, you think locomotive. That, yeah. But most of the noise there is train on track. I see. Uh, so the main noise would be down underground, pneumatic drills especially. It seems. You can hear it. It's metallic copper. Huh? Is this copper in these little those? Yeah, that's copper. Huh? That's pretty crazy. Friggin' camera light. There we go. That rock's pretty heavy, too. Yeah, it is. Look in there, Grenade. You see that right here? Yeah. See those? I can see. Copper. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, just out of curiosity, what do you, like, how much do you think that thing weighs? So that piece, what I was told, is 832 pounds. 832 pounds. Mostly copper. Uh, there's some rock on it, but right here. Yeah, I was looking at that. Right, Super yeah. cool. What is that that you're, I mean, anything uh, special? I think, it, I think it's just a like an polishing compound. Oh, yeah, okay. So it's, it's not, <laughs> nothing yeah. special. But it, it helps to remove some of the oxidation. Sure. Yeah, man, that's cool. All right, gotta make another stop here, folks. Here goes Spike. Oh, that, that stuff is okay. Uh, no, no, that's heavy. How are you liking the new light? Yeah. Like it. There's, there's one over there. Okay. I, there, I there's, know that there's two. Yeah. There is? Okay. They're yeah. strong. Yeah, they are. Yeah, that, that's a nice yeah, flashlight. That kind of flashlight heard. Wow. <laughs> Who's going to hear you cry out for help over that? It didn't even and hit the wall. It would be more noise than that, probably, because it didn't even hit the wall. It's not at the wall. You are correct. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It would, you're kind of out of luck. And now you can see why a lot of the older generations before us had hearing problems. <laughs>